I felt like we couldn't let ourselves lose on our home floor. Um, I think that's what it was more about than, you know, me not letting them lose. Um, we came to a timeout and we realized that, you know, the game was closing and, you know, we had a kind of a flat first half. And the second half, we wanted to make up for it. And we got ourselves back into the game, um, made it a tough one down the stretch, and we just wanted to pull it out. So I think it was more just drive. Um, yes. We worked hard this week in practice, and, you know, the main thing we focused about on was pushing through. And I thought that the key tonight was us pushing through at the end. I don't have, I don't have it just seemed like whenever the team needed a big shot or a big play, you were the guy that kind of stepped up and made it. I mean, did you just feel like at some point i got to take this on my shoulders? And... Well, I'm the leader of the team. Um, and I felt like, you know, this is my fourth year here. And, you know, I felt like if anybody was going to be the one to say, all right, let's go, we got to pick it up. And, you know, if there's a big shot that needs to be made, a block, a steal, or anything, I feel like I should be the first one to step up and say, I'll do it. And tonight I did. Career high 41. You got to feel good about that? Um, it's just hard work paying off. Um, that's the way I see it. Um, a lot of times I, throughout the season, it's easy to you know get tired and get away from your routine as far as you know getting shots up and keeping your game tight. And after sitting out, you know, last year being hurt, I kind of figured out a lot of ways that I could improve. And you know, during the season, just finding ways to stay in the gym and shoot on my own time and ball handling and keep my handle tight and just to keep my game tight, just working, 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 and understanding that this is my top priority. Um, I think that's the main thing. I think that's what allowed me to score 41 points tonight. You've had, what, 77 the last two games now? Do you feel like this is the best you've ever played in your life, two-game stretch, probably? Yeah, it's easily the best I've ever played because it's the hardest I've ever worked. So um, I think, you know, just the fact that I put in all of the work that I do, um, it's just paying off for me and my team. They're a pretty tough team, those guys. They're a lot of a lot of athletic guys, a lot of shooters, San Jose State. You know? Yeah, they're a great team. Um, you can't take anything away from them. I thought they really attacked us. You know, they challenged us, and it was either, you know, we could step up to the plate and, you know, match their intensity or let them run over us. And in the first half, that's kind of what happened. Um, they kind of out aggressive this, and in the second half, we matched it, you know, forced overtime, and we was able to, you know, beat them out. Crowd helped you much down the stretch. The crowd seemed like they came alive in the, in the overtimes a little bit more. Yeah, they really helped us um, throughout the game. They got me energized. I was pumped, and you know, I saw it in my teammates' faces. They were pumped as well. And, it was actually a free throw that one of the guys missed because it got real loud and he hesitated and missed the free throw. Um, so they played a big role um, towards the end of the game and, you know, distracting them and they couldn't hear play calls at times. And, you know, they kind of got us going as well. So um, they were a big help. Okay, thanks, man. I got to write a story on that. You're cheating a little bit. You didn't reach your average yet for the game. Go a couple overtimes. No, it was, um, it was just what we needed. Um, we needed to score some buckets, and, you know, that had to come with stops. And we were fortunate enough to get a few stops and get it going our way. So I just, you know, scored a few buckets for us, and we, we got it turned around on another end as well. What on that last play on the end of regulation where you hit the three-pointer? Um, well, originally we were trying to get Scotty on a skip pass because um, we figured they would be on me so much and we'd be able to get him open. But they covered it pretty well, I and mean, they said if they take away Scotty, I should, you know, get to the ball and just try to make something happen. And I realized time was running down, and I got the ball, and I knew we needed a three because if we got a two, it would have been under ten seconds. And you know, I just took the shot and it went in. What about the uh, the end of the second or the first overtime? Like the play didn't work quite the way you guys thought it was going to go? Um, well, it was my it was my fault. Um, at the end, I should have realized that the shot clock was running down. I didn't realize it was so close to the, the clock, the actual clock. But um, we just wanted to get it in my hands and make a play. You know, rather it was for me or my teammates. And, you know, I let the shot clock run out and we didn't get a shot off. So we just got to execute better. It seemed like you made up for it about two seconds with the five, <laughs> the steal and the five points on um, you know, anytime you make a play on offense that hurts your team, 
Um, I think our team as a whole took pride in, you know, making up for it on the defensive end. Darren Mahoney is a great example. Um, I think he makes up for a lot of our mistakes on the offensive end. But after that, I felt like I needed to make it up, you know, for once. You know, not, not let Mo always have our back, you know, just make it up for myself. Okay, thank you.